if they do have to do the termination, uh, flight termination, basically unzip the uh, spacecraft by a series of small charges, if they have to open up the spacecraft in that manner, then it's going to break up into a lot of pieces, just like the space shuttle did. The problem here is the uh, larger, heavier pieces will keep going. And now we have basically three kinds of debris that fall after a termination. The skins and all that type of material is, is very uh, lightweight and has a high surface area. And so it'll slow down very quickly, the skins, and they'll come down fairly quickly, uh, fairly short from where the termination happens. And there's not much mass to them. When they come down, they're gonna litter whatever they land on, but there's not much kinetic energy. Now, inside those skins, all those frames of the Starship, they still have a pretty good mass to area, which means that by component, okay, and again, these are stainless steel, so they don't burn up like the aluminum space shuttle. Uh, the stainless steel components, which are a little more concentrated, let's say the hinges and the bolts and uh, uh, all the frames, there's a lot of frames in a spacecraft. Uh, they give the shape to the skins. All those frames, now those, are a, uh, uh, more of a uh, mass to area ratio, which means they're going to continue on farther and they're going to have a lot more kinetic energy when they finally hit something. There are great photos from the space shuttle accident showing all sorts of impact craters from where debris hit. I have seen a couple from uh, this event where they've hit the sand and the beach and so forth. They left some pretty good impact marks. Then you got the really heavy, dense components, such as the uh, turbo pumps and the heavier parts of the engines. Those things come down with some serious, serious kinetic energy, and they will just ruin the day of anything they hit. Point is, all that debris doesn't magically burn up. It comes back down.